Well, good afternoon, America. Good morning, Australia. And welcome to everyone listening across the globe this morning. Welcome back to Insight Intelligence. I'm your host, Tony Lontis, and in a moment, I'm going to introduce you to my amazing co-host, Mario Beckes. But before I do that, if you're listening live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, don't forget that accompanying this interview will be all the links you need about this show, and in particular, how you can connect with my co-host, Mario. If you're wanting to listen to the replays in this series of shows, please jump on to YouTube, Tony Lontis, Binge Network TV's USA, or the Tony TV channel app available on Roku, LG, and Samsung smart TVs across the globe. Now, Each week we do a welcome to country and the importance of this is that it's an international movement that acknowledges the special and important role Indigenous communities play in the development of a country's cultural identity. So this morning I want to respectfully acknowledge the people people of the Yugamba language region, that is on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, the traditional owners of the land in which we meet and broadcast, and pay my respect to the elders past and present and all the Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander peoples here today and listening in post-production. Now, this is the second in our series of eight shows, and it's a powerful subject that we're talking about, and that is investigation and the world of investigation and it's a real privilege to co-host this show with Mario Beckers who has extensive experience and global knowledge in the intelligence realm. Now Mario grew up in communist Croatia then part of Yugoslavia and he witnessed a lot of social unrest before finding himself in the middle of the Croatian war of independence. Mario's world was turned upside down very quickly from a young age when the army came knocking at his door and telling him to report to duty in one hour. Since then, Mario has become a natural leader, public speaker, result-driven, best-selling, international, published book author, relationship builder, facilitator with experience in investigative techniques, interviewing, interrogation methods, human, a corporate human and competitive business intelligence. Over the past 30 years, Mario has conducted various types of investigations in government sectors, departments of defence, departments of foreign affairs, corporate and insurance sectors in Australia and globally. And his knowledge, expertise, academic research and training into investigative intelligence and investigative there's Monday morning tongue twister. <laughs> Interviewing <laughs> techniques is second to none. He and his team have proven techniques and strategies from analytical internal systems that stop you worrying about your next investigation, insurance claim, intellectual property theft, industrial espionage, and whistleblowers within your organization. Mario, welcome back to the show. It's such a delight to start my Mondays with you, my friend. Thank you, Tony, so much. And I wish to say hello and everybody uh, across the globe who is tuning in now. Uh, good morning, Australia. Good afternoon, US, and uh, whatever you guys are. <laughs> so, thank you, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> All over the place. Now, Mario, this week we're going to be talking about factual investigation. Mm. And factual investigation includes workers' compensation claims, uh, income and life insurance claims, uh, motor vehicle claims, superannuation claims, public liability, bullying, etc. And we're also going to have a little bit of a chat around social media intelligence and network mapping. Now, I'm really curious to get going. So, Mario, let's talk about factual investigation. What does a factual investigation involve? I want to take you past this question. I'd like to start this conversation just explaining why my business does what it does. Yes, please. Um, you know that feeling uh, that you get when you realize someone 
has taken advantage of you. Yeah. Well, I saw that problem. So it never happens again in your business. And there's a three pillars of my business in intelligence group. It's a three F's. Fear, fight, and freedom. Uh, oh. Fear, it's a, of losing money, yes. losing your reputation, losing competitive edge. And uh, second F, it's a fight. We fight against fraud, against criminal activity, against theft. And of course, there's a freedom, which is the F, freedom of risk from conflict and the freedom to do business without interruptions. So mm. that's the three pillars of my business. And one of the services, as you mentioned, the start, mm. it is factual investigation. Uh, for the public, uh, public must understand that there's a, there's a law enforcement agencies, which they are capable to do investigation and then modus operandi, it's different than uh, private yes. investigative companies like our one. On one side, we have the uh, law enforcement agencies has access to databases, which we don't have. They have their um, access to the logistics we don't have. And of course, their modus operandi, it's much more different. So corporations kind of call the police for the every investigation. However, they need to investigate either fraud or any criminal activity. Mm -hmm. And uh, they need to establish the uh, the timeline and uh, timeline mapping, and they need to uh, establish and they need to support this with the report that something would happen if they have a suspicion of something. You know that can be I don't know internal theft, can be the fraud, can be the uh, fraudulent claims, uh, insurance claims, just to name a few. They need a report which they can utilize and bring a perpetrator in front of the, uh, mm. the justice, which means our company will be engaged by the client to collect evidence and facts-based um, statements around some event. And how we do this, it's a factual investigation, of course, oh. which uh, we first of all need to be licensed to conduct such a type of investigation. Mm. And of course, Investigations are consist of hello Tony, hi, my name is Mario, just going to the investigation. <laughs> there, is, there is a there is a there's a there is a lot of legwork before Yikes! that. Yikes! Run yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That. <laughs> yes. So the, the the for example, insurance companies, they will engage us, yes. but before they engage us, they need to check our credentials, they need to check our reputation, they need to check our uh currencies. I mean currencies in shape or form of do we have any insurances? Because mm. nobody won't engage you just because you have the investigative company, you must have the these credentials. So this is the just a just a stepping stone in 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 their um, judgment to choose your services before anybody else. That has been said. Once we've been selected by the insurance company, we give the we will be given the opportunity to demonstrate our capabilities. Yes. The number one, it's a factual investigation, which means they have a fraudulent claim, which represent a client, some organization, and we are a service provider. So things are very straightforward. You know, they have the communication between their client mm. and insurance company, and therefore what is the case with uh, uh, quite substantial information, what the alleged crime it is, or it's alleged fraud, you know, regardless of type of event. Just to be clear, Ma we, we, yes, yes, Tony. So, uh, sorry, Mario. So, can a police investigation run alongside your investigation? Do you like work together for companies? Because I'm imagining if it's a rather large uh, fraud or or or, or um, criminal uh, activity, the police need to be involved. But my understanding is that they don't. The police don't aren't always involved in everything. Now, as long as we are acting uh, on a company behalf, to investigate uh, uh -huh. any type of event. As I said, it can be fraudulent insurance claim, can be criminal yes. activity, can be the theft. In that sense, police is involved uh, when there's a certain elements being covered. Like you know, I mean that damages are higher or it's against oh, uh, national security and so yes. on. let's just say murder you know we don't investigate yes. these things we investigate everything what is uh, suspicious and uh, we are we are the upfront uh, so when we're being engaged mm. and if we probe in our investigation 
uh, that there's elements of the, let's say, fraudulent insurance claim. And if insurance company alongside with their client, they decide to press the charges. Uh, that's, that's how they involve the legal team. And if there's elements to do uh, police be involved, they're going to involve the police. And our reports, it's a, it's a, it's a base for investigation. So uh, we must understand that we cannot do interrogations. We cannot no. do the interviewing as a type as a police can. And uh, I congratulate every investigator across the globe who is working this type of job. Uh, regardless of the background, you know, some investigators, they are ex-police officers. Or yes, detectives. like yourself, Mario. So you actually have the skills and knowledge behind what you do, <laughs> but you don't yes. actually, you, you operate within your uh, realm um, and complement, I guess, what what police may or may not do. You, I'm thinking that you might start an investigation and then discover something not so great and have to That's hand correct. it off to the police. Ah. Yes. <clears throat> After all, we when we get instructions, yes. our job is to collect the facts, not opinions. And this is the very important thing it is. So we can we cannot call witnesses in police station, we're not police, right? So like yeah. we are uh, depending upon um, goodwill to people yes. cooperate. And majority, they will cooperate willingly because they believe that's the right thing to do. Because uh-huh. once when you claim something, um, and we've been representing the insurance company, for example, or bank, mm-hmm. <clears throat> our job is to be introducing ourselves to the person we're going to uh, interview. So you don't say, this is investigation against you, right? <laughs> we just say, like, we, we're just uh, representing this such, such a company. In we just a, want to talk client. to you. Yeah, we just want to like to talk to you and, uh, you know, understand what what did happen. You know, some cases, let's just say, we have be, be, been involved, mm-hmm. theft of the yacht, three o'clock in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, yeah, so police will come on a day on a yes, scene, yes, right? They will take the details, but they will not run investigation just for the missing yacht, you know what I mean? Because they have, uh, mm. if it's a, many other things, had a more priority. So that's yes. the reason why I feel this gap in insurance company. So for example, three o'clock in the morning, your yacht has been stolen in front of your house, worth $200 million. Yeah. <laughs> insurance company Yikes. says, look, yes, uh, you know, we don't believe it's a genuine claim. Um uh-huh. And we like to collect more evidence around this because we don't understand what happened. Mm-hmm. So we, when we receive the case, we do some leg work. When I say leg work, which means yes. we do social and uh, social behavior uh, analysis of the person who is uh, making from, the claim. That's correct. Then you check in the environment. You know, you're talking to the people. You're like you have the sort of pattern of like police or police before he talks to the main suspect or personal interest or perpetrator, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. need to satisfy some forms so you can support. There's a timeline, event happened. What happened yes. before event? Yes. 24 hours, 48 hours, seven days. What's happened during the event and how the person reacted on a theft. And of course, you know, uh, is a vehicle or the yacht being secured or it's, uh, you know, happened... And majority of these things are, you know, you need to establish the facts around their claim. If someone says three o'clock in the morning, yacht's been stolen, and you know, I was in a bed. Okay, we need to check this because yes. there's always motive behind. Mm. Always, you know, a hundred million dollar <laughs> yacht. Gosh, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't easily hide one of those, though, could you, Mario? Like, oh, well. <laughs> Um, you like <laughs> I'm guessing you probably could if you just stole it and 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 sailed it out to sea, of course. And this but... is what I, yeah, this is, but this is where this is where police comes. You know, we yeah. many times we've been informed six months later or seven months later, one year later, police informed us yeah. mm-hmm. uh, that they recovered the vessel in different state, for example, right? And um, in that way. They discovered the vessel, not because of our investigation, but they can connect that this vessel was missing that day. And then you go back again to insurance company and say, police recovered the vehicle. It has been sto- uh, hidden somewhere. 
uh, because we need let's just say vehicle you know motor vehicle into hit and run or some car mm-hmm. accident mm-hmm. so to, this, this is the factual investigation it's we need to confirm the facts around event so and we can dates time people movements yeah. Yeah, and that's what I brought my that's what I brought my 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 skills of previous uh, employments <laughs> and government employments, and I could you know I would say my ex government Croatian government invent quite a lot of money into my education, so yes. I brought my you know my expertise and alongside with the investigators' expertise, which they're working with me. Um, I guarantee success to client that they're gonna have that that. Um, they're going to know what happened. Freedom from risk, you know what I mean? And are we going to fight yeah. for that for day, for day uh, um, against the fraud and against criminal activity yeah. in, in, in a nutshell? But the factual investigation, it's a investigative activity which you're collecting facts and never based on opinions. Opinions are, yes. are irrelevant and the clients always get in a report, shape, uh, written document, supported mm. by statements of the witnesses, mm. uh, statements from 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 client uh, perspective. Sometimes they need a bank statement, sometimes they need, you know, and this is the way that our success lies within and that yes. it is that we um, need to be very uh, resourceful. So we need to utilize every possible resource as a police have, as we say, access to criminal record we don't have we don't have access to the people drive licenses and you know i was just gonna say does that do you <clears throat> find that sometimes that hampers your ability to get to the truth or mario do you because of your extensive experience you know where to look to find that information look there's a difference difference between truth and justice and yeah. uh, you know what i mean yes. and uh, there's a good movie if you remember the call the training day Yes. When the guy says, uh, it's not what you know, um, it's what you can prove in a court of law. I- I'm sorry, a law abiding citizen movie. So yes, it's not yes, what yes. you know, it's what you can prove on a court of law. Court. And that's okay. where we are fitting there. So like our uh, operations and our activities, and particularly for the corporate world, because mm. every time when I get a case from the client, I represent the client, and that's the freedom from the risk. So we take the risk that we're going to conduct in legal manner yes this one is a frustrating some sometimes yes it is but we know our limits we that's mm-hmm. where we say to client we believe that you know when we hit the wall and we can't access some databases mm-hmm. but we believe based on the facts that there's elements of the some criminal activity the activity you should be involved with police so they have the legal team and they talk to police or dpp yeah. or whatever they need yes. Yes, but the base, the uh, basically, when we submit our report supported by facts, because the timeline it's always come back. Unfortunately, need to use this um, comparison: airplane accident. They had the black box. Black box is just a part of investigation. Yeah, and now, jo- and they, like when they do investigation, you know, they're doing what happened to the plane. 12 months ago, or yes. pilots, co-pilots. That's a very important thing in our factual investigation to establish the facts around event, not mm-hmm. just a, how something was stolen, but why. There, there's a, there's a, a 10 golden questions of criminalistics, which I, which I wrote in my, my books, um, which need to be satisfied in a written form and supported uh-huh. by evidence. Mm-hmm. And facts. So our client, when reads this, this is what's happened. This was the steps has been done. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is who's been interviewed, supported with a, you know anxious, and then mm-hmm. goes the conclusion based on investigation. This is what's happened. This is what's missing, and uh, we will you know client make decision is a genuine claim or non genuine. So no, it's not yeah. our job. Yeah, they supported with evidence. Sometimes investigation uh, can be then uh, taken further to surveillance. Yes. They can be done many other forms where we can support. But it's a frustrating, yes, it is, but it's a challenging, Tony. Like like mm-hmm. yourself, um, it's a different when you're working for the organization which has all assets, all logistics and government support. Yeah. Uh, and then yourself, you need to be 
very imaginative person like yourself. Mm. And that's a successful investigation. Believe it or not, in investigation, an investigator must be imaginative. Yes. And, and what you're doing in your head in factual investigation, when you see something on a paper, again, it's not what you know, but I was being trained and I can see the several people around me that adopted that. It's in your head, you have the event and you mm-hmm. use imagination. You have a couple scenarios in scenarios. your head. Scenarios, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you deducting every scenario with a new form of evidence. Uh, and that's how it is in your head. Like, you know, when you see TV shows and the, yes. some detective sits there, it's like in his head, like, you know, like. <laughs> I think this happened. Yeah. I think uh, that's the that's the evil um, perpetrator. Yes. And that's that's what it is. Um, uh, how an every investigation, doesn't matter if you're law enforcement agencies or us, you must use imagination as a tool yeah. to create event. How would something happen? How will I would do it? Or any other questions you have, you have mm-hmm. a couple of scenarios. And as you provide, you progress in factual investigation, you de- deducting the, some of the scenarios. And that makes you that person, that company. And I said to my investigators, uh, there is no job we cannot do it. Yes. But we need to know our limits. Sometimes confrontations can rise with the uh, with uh, yeah. personal interest because you know how they are approaching guys usually it's, you yeah. know cooperative to the moment like why are you accusing me there's no accusations this is not a, that's a word that way when you ask the questions you need to ask questions once but you need to ask proper questions a preparation is a mother of all of successes so we have opportunity and preparation of the case when you ask the questions you can sometimes say you can see by reaction or not supplying yeah. the supporting with uh, some statements. So factual investigation, it's a basically, it's a uh, collecting the facts, not opinions around mm. some case by applying all investigative methods. However, there's always limitation, as I say, because we have no uh, access to databases yes. as a police has. But at the end, clients receive the report which they can use in a court of law and we're standing behind every single word. So there is no room for mistakes because when you go into court of law or present the client, yeah, you, you know that, right. it, yeah, that's going to be right. So like, you know, everything has been supported and, you know, double supported and, you know, and, and yes. Mario, you work with um, clients globally and so... It, I'm guessing that the same process of factual investigation is applicable globally across the world. It, it would be the same process, just in different countries. You uh, perhaps have different restrictions or, or laws that you have to abide by. But the steps of a factual investigation, no matter where you are in the world, would be the same? Well, it will be similar, you know, it will be similar. And yes. however, I don't know legislation, for example, in in, in Germany, right? So yes. you need to understand what is their legal requirements to launch investigation. However, speaking about US and, and Australia, UK, they are very similar. Yes. So this is the good thing. And yeah. every investigation must have the shape and form. You can't just run into somebody. And I give the pride uh, that the customer service, I'll call the customer service. That's mean being polite, being professional. Mm. And, you know, because after all, we represent the clients. And I always said to my clients, it is your name every each time when you, yes. um, um, we're representing you in every case. And the client likes this because it's their name alongside with us. And mm. when we run investigation, we have the, you know, uh, different, different investigation requires different type of investigative uh, methods. Yes. Some of them, they are, uh, you know, verbally recorded. Some of them has been st- type of statement. Mm. But majority, you must have the, some legal form to satisfy. Because after all, it's to prove or disapprove alleged event. And yes. you can't do this just inventing things. You must have that. Now, you have the report, which is in some type of shape or form, whatever we agree now. And then you have the investigative methods. And approach is almost similar everywhere. Yeah. But again, 
it can have a limitations due to legal requirements, or let's say acts in some country, but majority they're sanctum. Yes, they mm. are. Crime is a crime. Doesn't matter where you yeah. are. Yeah. And Mario, my, I'm, I'm curious. So y- there's you and you have a team behind you. Do yes. you have certain investigators that like to investigate, say, insurance fraud versus uh, motor vehicle um, claims that are, are false? So within your team, I'm assuming you have certain expertise around certain areas. And so whatever that client looks like, so if they're an insurance firm or they're a government or defence agency, you have people within your team that have the capacity to slot in and do that work in that particular environment? That's correct, Tony. That is very correct. And you're spot on. We are not all experts in everything. No, we, no. And yeah, it's I mean, a big uh, field, isn't it? That's correct. And the, the, the point it is, uh, which you make it, it's very clear. Some investigators are highly specialized. For example, when, yes. I, when I left the government sector, I was the, uh, I was the great in, in information financial, which means intelligence and, and espionage and yes. so on and so on. Some uh, executive was a great in investigating um arson or some mm-hmm. of the doing the you know investigators love to do car accidents right because yes. they spend the time they spend understanding and, and it's a, analytical isn't it because it, oh yes distances and speed and and yes. lots of things involved in in motor vehicle absolutely cars. so like or the client says to us i like it tony montis mario she's a great for our psychological clients Psychological claims can be very draining. It's mm. lengthy, and you know it's usually prone the bullying, harassment, or whatever it is. Yes. Right. So it takes longer time. So we have the uh, some investors who are very keen to do those type because they're mm. good in this. And you, of course, you align the case with investigator. Mm. Um, you don't just give the case to somebody because success yeah, yeah. of the client depends to reducing him the time and cost of investigation. Give, yeah. give, give, by giving them quality report, and that's where they always come to the client. Instructions. Instructions are very, uh, very important tool yeah. in delivering anything. If you say to me, Mario, I like to have the black coffee, that is not good enough for me. Black coffee. The black coffee, if you like it, you're gonna tell me the brand. You know, I mean, what time of the day you want to make? What do I make? And how would you like to make the black coffee? Same goes with investigation. Client has uh, some. Uh, valuable information about investigation. So we do the marriage for the case between investigator and the case. But however, I always come back to this one. I need the instructions. What you want to know what's happened, we understand, but I need to understand how would you like us to run this case? You know what I mean? Mm. Is this how many people to interview? Because you don't want to run investigation and occur the cost of the client if it's not necessary. Because yeah. after all, they pay. Yes. And uh, sometimes it's enough to interview a certain number yes. of the people. As the investigation progressing, I always say to a client, I like to know from you, we come to across the three other names, you know, they could be rele- they, they're relevant to investigation. Yeah. However, they know when you say three more interviews, that's an additional cost. That's right. So client, it's always must be upfront with two things. With us, with instructions, I mean to be upfront communications with the client mm. Uh, mm. during investigation. Where we are at, what's happening, uh, ETA or the closing case, or expectations, meet expectations, because it's not what we want, but what the client wants. And we are a service mm. provider, and yes. we need to utilize our experience, knowledge, and, and allow logistics to give satisfactory results. So the f- uh, factual reports, as I say again, must be precisely word by word, dot by dot, supported by the facts and evidence, not the opinions. People mm. go to court, and when you go to court, much straight. May mm. or may not take in consideration that you are investigator with the skills or not, but once when you provide a report, it's a legal bound document. Yeah. And that makes me as a business owner and as a director very responsible that every report goes out, I check. Yeah. I check before yes. it goes out. And I, if, I'm, if I understand this is good to go, client gets, it's done. 
There's no yeah. point or return. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's for Estonia. Mar I want to talk a little bit more about um, bullying and, and workplace yes. harassment. But before I do, um, how widespread is what's, what we sometimes refer to as white-collar crime, although it, it is just, in fact, crime? How widespread are incidences around any of the insurance claims? It, 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 does it happen all the time? Uh, look, I would... I don't have statistics now in front of me, um, mm. but a lot, I'm glad you asked me that question. We classified everything in our lives, particularly in corporate world. Yes. Blue crime, blue collar, blue collar oh, no. crime, yeah. white collar crime. Yeah. Crime is a crime. Crime. That's what I yeah. think too, Mario. I will. It, yes. Yes. I'm, and okay. it, it, it doesn't matter. It, crime is crime. It doesn't matter yes. whether you're who you are, or if you're the rich dude with that stole the <laughs> stole the yacht to make an insurance claim, it's still a crime, isn't it, Mario? And it doesn't matter if you're a down on the luck person and and made a fraud, fraudulent cra uh, claim, it's still crime, isn't it? Yes, we must understand that the fraud or crime, it's always represented with minority. Mm. However, that minority, for those who say, for example, for the fraud or, or theft in corporation, has a duration when it started and is ended. We know when somebody's been caught and proven, you know, I mean, through investigative methods, that something happened. So it proved, mm -hmm. but we didn't know how long last that is, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can last three days, sometimes it can last three months, sometimes it can last yeah. three years. Yeah. Corporations is like an elevator. Criminal activity is like an elevator from bottom to up, from up to down, right? Ah, okay. Doesn't matter what measures you put on a place. There is a good saying in Australia learned, and it's beautiful. Who is watching the watches? Mm -hmm. Now, when you put in places, for example, last week I spoke with a, with a, with a, my new client, mm -hmm. the, one of the largest mushroom uh, growers, sellers, and providers to the global market. Oh, they that's have the, yes, they had the problems with the fraud. And, really? Uh, yes, big big time. Because don't oh, forget, no. you know, <laughs> the fraud is not just that, uh, you know, somebody steal it, it's a transport involved, logistics. Yes, yes, you know? yes, yes. And there's another side of the very nasty one, which is um, uh, industrial espionage, which is element of sabotaging the product, right? And <gasps> so on. So, you know, oh. instead of going around, we need to understand that fraud's happening daily. Bipolar crime is represented in any organization. So everybody who is in suit is a, or in, in, in yeah. you know, in, in behind the desk yes, of, yes, of yes, the, yes. for the figure of speech as a conversation behind the desk. And all problems coming to the door. This is what every corporation must understand. How... Um, much you desire to protect your intellectual property, uh, your financial gain, mm. your reputation on market, mm. and the keep competitive edge. Some corporations have the zero tolerance policy. Most of the corporations, they have the no tolerance whatsoever, but the fraud's happening, and that's where you're fitting mm. in. Once when we discover that white collar crime is never involved with a... <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. I'll try to put this way. <laughs> I had the case. I had the case when yes. I come to the client recently. Um, they lost more than hundred million <gasps> year, hundred million dollars last year. We recovered seventy five percent for them, oh, but it wow, wasn't involved. Yeah, but it wasn't involving the you know uh, the people who do. Everybody will name the suspect, right? You say like, ah, it's a Tony and Mari. We know they are yeah. dodgy. Or... <laughs> They're guilty. It doesn't go that way. And, you know, I went to the client and said like, if I may, you know, you understand the case, you understand the fraud uh, policy procedure prevention and so on, so on. And I asked for the list of the employees of the month. Yeah. And they said like, well, you know, why would you ask this? These people uh, never take the break. These people never uh -huh. take the... Uh, Siki, and it's like yeah, I like to get those names right, yeah. And I, I told the client parallel 
we run investigation, I like to send these people in different yes. departments or in a mm-hmm. holiday. Three is one particular lady didn't take the holiday. Ah. And the moment when the two or five or three or five, I can't remember now, they left for the holiday, they forced for holiday, right? You know. Yes. Come on, guys, three is in a holiday secret, just just go. Mm. The discrepancies start showing and that was for me indication and the client says oh my god i said no 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 relax we need to understand models of branded fraud because yeah. these people have their hands on finances so let's mm-hmm. go to find out how they did it who is involved yes. and of course network in the wife called crime so it's going from the door to the yes. top yes and it's sometimes ungrateful to present report to the, the board and of course it's a lot of you know you're accusing me i'm not accusing you nothing there's a facts here this is a report you need to take this with your legal team and everything else however this is how it's happened so there's always some type of connection tony uh-huh. so the white collar crime it's always involved a high amount of money and yeah. the clients need to understand what they want with the fraud fraud prevention is good but as mm. i mentioned before who is watching the watchers sometimes directions needs to be sorry sometimes your eyesight need to line up in direction on those who you give the trust to monitor yes. your preventions against the fraud crime yeah. and so on and tony there's a million examples you know before the covid I had many cases which was involved usually Friday afternoon, Saturday morning when the employee forgot something, of course. And went back to work. Yeah, like they're working long hours. Like corporations believe working long hours is good, but... Yeah, no. (laughs) Frosters already know layout of the floor or the communication, so Mm. any type between the clients, communication between the peers and employees. And imagine nine o'clock on Friday night, you're still working long hours, right? There's a lot of genuine people who work, but the yes. perpetrators love this because they're, you know, because one it thing- It allows, it gives them, it, it, it gives them a cover, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm just process, on Yeah, process have, process have the one great asset which we don't, people don't have, imagination. Yeah. They know yeah. the loopholes, but they have imagination you have. That's how the forces are. Forces has been educated mm. in corporations or online. You don't go to school how to become fraudster. But no. what you have is your imagination. Yeah. Okay, if I've been, if, you know, because they're already looking at the end game, how are we going to be discovered? So what you're saying to uh, uh, cover, how are we going to talk, you know, and all these things. So the white collar crime is spread. And usually mm-hmm. white-collar crime, it's a bigger cost for the organization. Yeah, and I said yeah. to my clients, you don't know till investigation doesn't start. And sometimes, and more often I suggest my clients, even before you proceed with uh, uh, charging somebody involved the police, mm. let's go run this investigation and I see how the know. octopus is yeah. spread around the organization. Yeah. So, Catch you one person doesn't mean you You've sold got... it. But yeah. sometimes it's a guy from the door in the loading dock to the some senior executive. Yes. Okay. A whole line of, of people doing the wrong thing. Oh my goodness. And you um, need to I... ask yourself what is what is behind this. I deserve I revenge, or you know, there's a lot of it's a variety and we don't have that much time, but I always have to plan. There is always the reason and motive behind this. Either it's a money financial gain, or yeah. it's a to you know to make a company weaker or something. Yes. Like but yes. please, sorry. yes, yes. Um, quickly before we get onto social media, mm-hmm. um, in terms of bullying and harassment, um, and it's an important topic to touch on today because. Um, having experienced bullying and having experienced workplace bullying, I'm thinking from my... Hello, Tony. Hello. Tony. Tony.
Oh, nee. Sorry, oh, Mario. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I was just about to send you a text. So, like, okay, that's okay. <laughs> I have no idea what happened then. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so bullying, repeated behavior. Is that part of what you do is show that repeated behavior as evidence of a bullying? That's correct. That's yeah. correct. That's correct. Yeah. This is very, very sophisticated type of investigation. Yeah. Um, after all, every investigation, you're dealing with a, with a, with a person, with a human. Human being, yeah. Yeah. However, there is some sensitivity, extreme sensitivity when you invested in harassment and bullying. Um, that being said, not every claim is genuine claim in harassment and bullying. Yeah. Uh, this is our job. We need to discover why happened, how happened, and by whom, and not repeat again. And yeah. it's difficult for me to see how some people have been treated in the organization. Um, yeah. But that's up to senior management and you know executive management to deal with the internal flow of employment and verifications and how people act. Harassment and bullying is very difficult because it's it's repetitive. It's happening. Yes, yes. It usually involves uh, certain people in organization. Uh, but most of investigation can be supported by the by the evidence statement. Uh, that 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 occurred that this is the true event yeah. to yeah. accord of their statement that they've been bullied harassed but sometimes that cannot be even uh, investigated because yeah. as you say our investigation has limitations yes. and we uh, get support from organization and the management team with uh, you know organizing interviews and giving us facts and evidences and everything else Mm. And sometimes it's very hard to uh, prove that event took the place, Tony, for one simple reason, uh, because it's absolutely, verbal. Absolutely, because they're good at doing things outside of everyone's sight, vision, and, and all the rest of it. I can't imagine how hard that is for you to it do is, some yes. of that work. Yeah. And as like in that investigation, we go a little bit extra and we talk to the client and say, like, um, Perhaps the climate doesn't want to tell us all how it's happened. Mm, mm. Uh, but there is the people who are professional psychologists who can discuss yes. and give us some, some directions. They will never tell us how, what to discuss with the, with the patient, yeah, but yes, directions, but they yes. they can give you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And usually harassment bullying goes for a very long time, very long time. Yeah. And um, the fear of retribution, it's, it's high. Um, yes if they lodged a claim. And I saw lately, there was a lot of bullying. Uh, claims has been done when yeah. somebody left employment of that company. Mm. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's difficult, very sophisticated, and we need to take the extra care and caution. And that's always train my, my staff. When you have yeah. this type of investigation, be the human before everything, mm. with, the, with knowing what your job it is, but be the human because we're talking, it's not a fraud, fraud is a theft, but somebody being bullied, yeah. it's, it's a scar it's inside, which you don't see. that's correct. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. absolutely. Yes. In talking about bullying, um, a next point before um, we want to talk about social media. Yes. And social media and, and factual investigation is, is again, yeah. such a topical mm. area. Um, how does your team work within the arena of, of, of social media? I'm really fascinated about this. Um, you know, Tony, that's, that, that's actually a great question. You know, I belong into the generation of the dinosaurs. And I remember when I started my career in intelligence. We had no uh, internet. Uh, there was no internet, yes. <laughs> that's, uh, there was had, no internet. That's correct. And, you know, remember, I started communism and intelligence. And uh, yeah. we have the, something that was called the card system, right? Which was like like yeah, in your yeah, library. Yeah. You know, we can library yes. the lady yeah. pull us. Yeah, those little book. cards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was, was called modus operandi system which is uh, indexing the type of the activity related to the person, time, and, you know, it's, it's, mm, it's so mm. lengthy. But basically, it's a car system. Today, you go on, a, on a Dr. Google, Tony Long, <laughs> <Lontis>. oh, okay, <laughs> is that? Now, uh, during less sophisticated methods, I would call analog before the internet, yeah. the journalists played the same key role as today. 
Uh-huh. And the journalists were those ones uh, who will put the, something in, in public domain. Yes. Will read and they will stuck to this, right? And it was more accountability, responsibility. Social media boom happened in in the last decade, and it's um, it was it is a big big uh, revol I will call revolution and evolution. Uh, it simultaneously revolution in accessing information and evolution in uh, our society that can put whatever they want you know yeah. now whatever it's on the internet I always say is uh, in, 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 in short source reliability and uh, information validity must be checked it's not important who said what but what has been said yeah. Social media intelligence belongs in the group of the open source intelligence, which is basically, you, got, you know, we talk about can access. you can access everything with publicly available ideas, right? Now, now there's a trick, right? How do you use this information, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, usually there's, you know, clever barristers, lawyers, solicitors, if you go in the court, they're going to say, like, you spied on our client. Yeah, but it's a public, but you spied on our client. So they try to argue this one. <laughs> Social media intelligence, it is the mapping of the activity related to the person in a certain period of time with actors on the scene. So you and I on Twitter, who we're who we talking, yes. how we're talking. However, yes. when you're doing the mapping and when you're doing the social media intelligence, it's very important to select two things, source uh, uh, reliability and information validity. So, you know, mm-hmm. there's a source grading. is a source, Tony Lontis, who is on the internet last 10 years. And people always like to listen from her. Mm-hmm. Or is a, a Mario Becker's two days on the internet, right on Twitter, and no friends and nothing. And but I I have the information about you know everyone. So ah. and then there is information about uh, uh, validity, which represents. Uh, and I like to talk to this client. I always explain them on a chart, like how to grade information. Yes. Validity. It is like is this information related to the what I'm really needed. Yeah. And uh, and as I said, like people usually look the name or surname instead of the content. Content is very important. Social media, uh, as you know, Tony, social media can be very tricky. People love that publicity, love this uh, yes. excitement to be yes. loved, and you know, yes. darlings of internet. Yes. But information is usually altered before he's placed it in a domain. Right? So this is not a news from let's just say from the war in Ukraine. You know, I mean, where we mm. okay today they have the peace talks, right? I mean, all yes, the peace talks. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I put on a, I'm writing the book about Tony and Mario diary from 1995. Yeah, yeah. Watch the space. So <laughs> investigation it can be can be used investigative uh, uh, as a part of investigative uh, process. Uh, dually one to give you directions where to go a second to collect the evidence so social media it's social media intelligence is very important for the mapping there's a several mm. softwares there uh, on a on a market which they can use and that's where the problem is as soon as you start mapping extensively it can uh, create uh, legal hurdles right because that's what? called that can be not stalking but um yeah, yeah, um, yes, yes. Analyzing yes. person, uh, personal, data. personal personal data, right? But in investigation, you know, you investigate everything. However, you're using the information related to the case, which, of course, if I put on a Twitter and say like, oh, I my back was being hurt because of my wall could be I've been bullied. But then three weeks later on the Twitter, I put, look at me. I'm They're skydiving. My, it's kind of, <laughs> that's yeah, you know, like oh, uh, like I'm on the border, border, right? It's just like, uh, okay, so this is what you you claim it. This is what the activities are. So we prove with yes. other elements of investigation, social media intelligence. So in 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 short, it's not important who says what, but what has been said. It's a content, right? Mm. Content can be misleading, deliberate and purposely. A content can yeah. be something that can assist you in building further uh, investigation this or looks supporting. a bit fishy yeah this that's doesn't correct quite yeah. make yeah so so social media must um add to investigative work as well 
in terms mm. of what people post and and how they post you you know i'm guessing that you and the team find lots of interesting <laughs> stuff on social media that cause you to go hmm that's not quite right you know the funny thing is Tommy. People uh, love to talk about things which, as you said, something very important, something beginning. Yeah. I cannot be expert in everything. I'm expert no. in information. That's my, that's my forte. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to social media, I always say, like, be careful what you put there because it always mm-hmm. stays forever. There's a website called archive.org. Uh, that uh, domain, actually, it's a, it's a global police website. Yeah. And records every screenshot of every activity every day, every few minutes of everybody, right? Whatever you are. Yeah, it's called archive.org. You can't wow. delete just, you like, just can't delete. <laughs> um, I delete my Facebook, never existed. There's always a Facebook, you know what I mean? If you know it. Ah, you know. <clears throat> and that is fascinating. Yes. Because that means that, you know, whatever you've ever put on the internet, on, on social media, no matter Always even if you whatever. delete your account, it's still there. Fascinating stuff, man. And Did... you'll, not, you'll not believe that you mostly um, people who are you relating to, they they are the, those ones who the first ones in the screenshots and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I know some things. But basically, everything on social media stays on social media. Um, it's been data uh, mining of the data on the social media, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always said make it two two differences when you collect data, source ability, information validity, and take it with a big grain of salt. Everything that's written there, yeah. particularly when somebody build all these stories about successes or yes. everything else. One yes. thing it's like when you and I, Tony, promoting you know married to this on my show. It's a fact. Married to on my show. Absolutely. Change time. He was yes. there. He can support. Yes. There's a video. But when the people creating anticipation, you know what I mean? And as I social media, it can be um, very, very untrustworthy because yeah. the people can forgive everything but the success never. And that's how majority of this bullying, harassment happen. Your yeah. happiness is somebody else's sadness. They yeah. will do everything to make you upset and be yeah. investigating this. And that's what I say. What's on the internet says on the internet. You can't delete. Yeah, yes. yeah. So be careful what you put out there, people. Be That's kind right. in yeah. every instant. Be kind because it stays around. Before we, um, we've got uh, running out of time really quickly. Yes. I just wanted to, <laughs> Mario. How do you keep your team in terms of social media and the rapidity with which it changes and the algorithms shift and ex- how do you keep your team up to date on just the social media aspect of what you do? Well, I apply the one simple method which I learned um, yep. while I was working in military intelligence and diplomatic intelligence. Every time, every time when some event happened, Tony, they will be analyzed how to prevent this happen again. Same goes in yep. social media investigative uh, techniques. Soon as I see that something happened on a global market in Australia, whatever it is, uh-huh. and we see that the that, uh, that Modus operandi of the fraud of fraudsters is changing, mm-hmm. changing with the uh-huh. time. We have a two years working yes. from home, so they adjust themselves on digital platforms to create a more fraud, uh, yeah. sorry, fraud, fraudulent gains for themselves. Yeah. So I'm using every opportunity I see that fraudsters or criminals or, you know, I mean, some new tools has been mm-hmm. uh, adopted by, by the fraudsters or the, the, the market. I will analyze and I will send an email to everybody say, this is what's, what's happening. happening, what's yeah. happening. This is what my findings are. This is recommendations, extra readings. And as you know, Tony, you know, you're yeah. a smart, intelligent woman. When you give the argument, you need to give the counter argument and need to give them the uh, references. So yeah. I keep that way by analyzing what's happening in the market, created the document yeah. and spread and the sh- spread across Throughout my network. Team. 
yeah, that yeah. my team to learn this. So some they read, some they don't, <laughs> and uh, but I'm there to always remind them. So yes, <laughs> Mario, what a fascinating show! I can't you, wait till next week. We're going to be talking about surveillance investigations, including geospatial intelligence yes. and surveillance intelligent property theft, online surveillance, work productivity. Another fascinating conversation. I can't wait to see. I'm learning so much. Some of it's a little scary, I might um, <laughs> I, I, I might say. Yeah. But most of it's just fascinating from my perspective. You, and knowing that, of course, you teach and educate in this realm is incredibly um it's a wonderful feeling to know that there's Mario Beckers and Inside Intelligence in the world looking after uh, and finding and chasing down fraudsters. So, That's Mario, right. thank you so much for being You're on the show today. Um, I just want to do a final plug for Blood Soaked Soil, which I've been yes. listening to uh, via audiobook um, again <laughs> over the weekend when I have a few moments. Um, and where can people get it? Look, the Blood Soaked Soil, either Amazon or Audible, you know, if you want yes. people to listen. Yes, um, I've got it, it is... on Audible because I love to listen and you get to hear Thank Mario's you, voice Thank telling you, his own story. It's really yeah. profound. Well, I truly believe that people will um, learn something from this. And Absolutely. As I say, we always learn the mistakes too late, in, from the own mistakes too late. I want people to learn true. a little bit much more earlier than... Um, than too late from my mistakes and to do. you know yeah, yeah. yeah so but yeah take it only thank you apologies to the all listeners it's six o'clock in the morning you see this so I like know. i was a little bit slow so. <laughs> no mario yes. you were brilliant thank you, wonderful Tony. the gorgeous mario beckers will thank be you. back next week with another episode of inside intelligence and that my friends is your lot for this week bye mario bye everyone bye bye